we might talk a little bit about our curriculum. But if you want to uh, call our school, 605,000, the number cannot be easier unless it was one. But it's 605,000, 605,000. And to call in today, we got a guest, I'm telling you, he made United States history yesterday. He was on every TV station from Kansas to Kansas. <laughs> and that's Dr. Moore with Kettering University. But if you want to call in, we'd we'll love to have you do so. 239 57 Three, three. Some have that number right by the phone, 239-5733, and we do accept calls from mobile phones. How you doing, Paul? Here, you got an itchy back there, buddy? I <laughs> yeah, do. Okay, I caught him in a moment of scratching. Nice. Okay, Paul, it's so good to have you. Thanks, for, sh my head, Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> That's my bud. Paul's my bud. Okay. Well, let's see. We got some special well, guests. We always knows, have man. special <laughs> guests because we got special kids. I'm going to introduce the pretty one first. That's you, Dejanay. How you doing, girlfriend? Say hi. Okay, tell us who you are, please, so your audience... You think Mom's listening? I know she's working right now out uh, at our food distribution, but maybe she's uh, stepped into the, uh, to, the, uh, to the vehicle to listen. Tell us who you are, dear, and what grade you're in, and what you did today. My name's Dejanay. I'm in seventh grade, and I helped out with the... My name is Dejanay, I'm a seventh grade. And you did and what? What was your tasks with the today? Food, with the food giveaway. And you did what? What was your tasks today? I was helping pack down the boxes, and I was passing out the food. And you did all that? I didn't know that. Oh my goodness, you did all those things. Yeah, folks at our school, we have a drive through Oh my goodness, you did all those things. Yeah, folks at our school, we have uh, drive throughs and we have all the folks stay in the cars, warm cars. And our volunteers, the two young uh, folks that are with us, uh, myself, and we probably had uh, 20, 20, 20, maybe 25 volunteers. And we were wet from quarter to eight, seven thirty, till uh, till it stopped raining. So uh, these folks worked long and hard and blessed them. And uh, Dr. Moore, uh, we always have a word of prayer before we begin our uh, distribution. And we, we thank the Lord for the day. We thank the Lord for our volunteers. And we ask um, the Lord to help those people that come through so that they will treat us with respect as we intend to treat them as well. That's something we try to do all the time. And sometimes uh, I lead the prayer as I did this morning. But the last couple of times, in general, we've been able to have the chosen one. So I willingly relinquish <laughs> the chosen ones for myself. So what a great day we had, though. Well, we had another helper here today. <laughs> Handsome young man. That's my buddy Marzell. Well, what happened young man. today? Yeah. <laughs> That's my buddy Marzell. Zell, what happened today? She did all the work. You must have been sleeping in the rain. What were you doing? Mar looks like she did all the work. You must have been sleeping in the rain. Putting uh, tomatoes in the bags, tying them up, put and those in the box, delivering them to the uh, table, uh, where you put those in the boxes, and. So delivering you were pretty uh, boxes to the cars. You were pretty versatile too, then. Okay, to make them little bitty tomatoes about a half inch. Yeah. What do you think, folks? Quit swinging. Is that about you? I'm getting dizzy. I'm getting seasick. Quit moving. Quit moving. I'm getting dizzy. I'm getting seasick. Quit moving. Quit moving. Quit moving. You're going to sleep. You saw those little tomatoes? Yeah. What they were? What color? Orange. You're right. Why were they orange? I wonder. Not red. I don't know. Okay. They Must have been their DNA was DNA. mixed up, huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> think tomatoes have DNA? Mm -hmm. okay, well, that's now for them, so you got to find that out. That's a Dr. Moore. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's now in, uh, introduce for a quick moment. Dr. Moore, a while ago, shake your hand right here. Did I have a chance to do that today? Because I ran in like a wild goose coming out of somewhere here. So, uh, Dr. Moore, we were so blessed by you yesterday, my friend. Thank you, sir. And I think if you folks watched Channel NBC 25 last night and at 6 o'clock and at 11, you likely saw the good doctor in our school where he did a Dr. tremendous a thing for our kids, and I'm going to let him tell you all about that. So Dr. Moore has a story besides doing just what he did. He has a story 
I don't think right you found now, very Dr. interesting. Moore we'll ask him to elaborate on that a little bit. But I know right now, Dr. At Moore is Kettering University yeah. in the business yeah, department at Kettering, Kettering University. Yeah. Yeah. We have a wonderful relationship with Kettering. We both know Dr. Boom Boom Bell over there. That's my bud. And of course, your president is an outstanding man by way of being a visionary. And he's coming up that University Avenue corridor and some other things as well. So we're real pleased. We have uh, our kids go to the summer program, the AIM program, and others. In fact, we had one of our young ladies go to the school about a month ago and yeah. saw the Gapster. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm through babbling here, Dr. Moore. So why don't you kind of tell us what you did and maybe a little bit of why you did it. Okay. We'd like 239, when your doctor starts talking, if you want to call in and ask him something, 239-5733. Big bad Jesse will answer that phone. And we'll put you live on the air, my friends. Two three nine five seven three three. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to present to you uh, Dr. Moore from Kettering University, uh, my good friend. Yes, thanks for having me today, uh, Art. Uh, yes, um, as Art uh, eloquently announced, <laughs> um, I am a uh, business professor at Kettering University. Um, I teach international business, strategic management, and managing organizations. When I'm not teaching, I'm running my 501c3 uh, foundation. The name of it is Dr. C. Moorer and Associates Incorporated. Uh, we are a scholarship providing and grant making uh, organization. We also run a virtual mentoring network that we call the Mentoring Suite. Uh, so its URL is uh, mymentorwasme.net. Uh, so in addition to scholarships, grants, and uh, virtual mentoring, from time to time, we like to perform what we call random acts of kindness. Uh, so our random acts of kindness are meant to inspire and motivate students, as well as educators, to achieve great promise. Our nonprofit has a global emphasis, but most importantly, we like to do good work in the communities, the communities that uh, we operate in. So since our headquarters is now in Grand Blanc, uh, Michigan, Right in between Grand Blank, where our office is, and the university I teach, is the wonderful International Academy of Flint. So uh, a few weeks back, I, I reached out uh, to Art because it was time for us to, once again, perform a random act of kindness, and we wanted to inspire young people, inspire young people at the uh, school to continue doing, doing well. And uh, one of the great ways that we thought about or approached inspiring the youth was through a shoe giveaway. Right, so a... Uh, yeah, Jesse, I'll I gotta, I gotta go, go ahead. I gotta go this buy business her. must go on here as usual. <laughs> just go ahead and write through. No, no worries. Okay. Not at all. Uh, so a young lady came in and I think we're going to exchange uh, a tape or something. Okay. So go ahead. Uh, yes. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. <coughs> no no. So, so a shoe, shoe giveaway. giveaway. Uh, uh, but not, not only shoes, shoes we, we wanted, wanted to also pass out the memoir uh, from failure to promise, so that we can inspire students. Well, wait, what's a memoir, Doc? Oh, a memoir. Tell us about that. Okay, all right. That's so, a big word for me. Uh, no, not at <laughs> did all. Did I not, say it right? No, oh, of course you did. <laughs> not you, Art. Right. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, a memoir. A uh, memoir is an autobiography. Um, it's a, a narrative. Many of them come in narrative style, or they're written in narrative so style. So you wrote a book. Is that what you're trying to tell me in I English? I sure did. <laughs> yep, in English. Wrote a book. Yes, I yes. scanned it, too, by the way. <laughs> okay, yes, all right. I scanned it. Yes, all right. What's in there? But, but I'm yeah. sure Marcel and Dejeuner are going to do more. Kids, have you it's, opened it yet? Did you get to read the book? Did you? Well, not get to read it, but look through it. Page through it. Okay, that's good. You got one, too, didn't you, hon? Okay, good, good. It's good reading. Okay. All right, so the book, along with the shoes, where the book I try to uh, lay out, lay out some guidelines to young people as to how to reach their goals and uh, some of the challenges that they may stumble across as they reach their goals. So, footsteps toward promise was more so of a, a head to head to toe type of um, program or incentive for young people, where they get the book for their minds and their hearts. And then the shoes or the new kicks for the mm -hmm. feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were pleased. We were pleased with the turnout. Now, I'm, uh, we were too, certainly, sir. I'm going to question the kids about their color and stuff like that in a moment. But I want to hit on something that audience don't know, but I happen to. Yes. Learning from you yesterday as well as looking through the book. 
You flunked out of college, big dude. Yes, I did. Absolutely. That, that's the, and I'm not insulting him, my friends, in, oh. in the radio and TV. I'm not insulting him. He makes an issue of this in terms of how he, you know, well, he'll tell you the story. But yes. uh, from failure comes success. Yes. From failure can come success. Doctor, why don't you just for a few minutes elaborate on, I think that's a fantastic story. Let's touch on that for a hot minute. Yes, yeah, certainly. I flunked out, uh, and I make that uh, no surprise. It's no surprise to the university. Uh, no surprise to the folks at Kettering that uh, while I was a student there, initially I struggled. Um, I struggled greatly. I struggled um, due to a lack of academic preparation. I didn't have the, the study habits that, that I needed to succeed the first time around. Doctor. Yes, sir. Why? <laughs> why did you not have those? Now, this could be crucial to listeners and yes. also to these two young kids here. Uh -huh. Why did you not have that, that knowledge and that skill on how to study? So okay. tell us about that if you can. Okay. And no one questioned you on that yesterday. Certainly. And I'm sure you'll cover it. Certainly. Right? And I, I'm sure I'm not embarrassing. I'm worried that the audience thinks I'm trying to oh, embarrass no, you. Oh, no, no. to embellish you not, in reality. Not, not at all. Right. Or no. I'm, I'm very comfortable. Very comfortable. And, and confident uh, speaking about the subject of failure. Um, I would say that in terms of my high school academic preparation, it was par, or in some cases it might have been good, great, or even acceptable, but not for the level of rigor that GMI slash Kettering uh, required. Um, so what happens is if you, if you have a a par or fair educational uh, preparation, it doesn't mean that you'll excel or you'll understand how to excel at the college level. Uh, so students have to find ways to dig in, dig deeper, study more. Um, after school programs are great, uh, Saturday workshops provided by schools, nonprofit organizations. Kettering University is bridging the gap for yeah, students in the community by offering a Saturday math program. So Saturday math is free, a free workshop that is led and facilitated by uh, college no professors. Doctor, I'm interrupting you, not yes. to be rude, but I Certainly. think we have a call and we try to honor them whenever the folks call in. Absolutely, sir. yes. Jesse, what